Welcome to Shotty Super Coach, and yes, we're talking cricket again. Sorry to those out there who maybe cricket isn't your cup of tea and are licking their lips for a bit of Super Coach content, but this is a massive issue. It's rocked the nation, and there are those people out there who say maybe it's not the biggest thing in the world, or there's a few bigger fish to fry. Of course there is, but this is really struck at the heart of what we stand for as a nation and yes it's only sport but I've got mates who don't have any interest in sport or any interest in cricket and it really has got them rattled and I think the reason for it is because it really strikes at the heart as I said of what we stand for as a nation being Australian and it has dominated headlines for the last few days. I did a video the other day it was pretty well received, plenty of views, plenty of interest about it, hence I thought, because so much has changed since then, I thought I'd do a bit of an updated video after sanctions have been handed down. Of course, if you've missed them, Warner and Smith copped a year, Lehman, no involvement, Bancroft, nine months. And by the looks of things, I'm sure we'll learn a bit more over the coming weeks, but it looks as if just those three men were the ones involved. I'm not sure what happened to that leadership group that we spoke about and was spoken about in that press conference, but I'm sure we'll learn a little bit more, but at the moment we seem to know a fair bit. The sanctions have been handed down and plenty of discussion about that. So if you haven't seen my video the other day, it was certainly an emotionally charged one and a frustrated sports fan. And I stand by everything I said. At the time I said I thought they should cop a year and they did, and I think that's fair. There's been a bit of discussion about the length of the sanction and maybe it's too harsh and that sort of thing but personally i know there's been some other instances from other countries like duplessis and philander and a few other guys who have ball tampered and, and haven't received as much of a whack in terms of suspension and missing matches i think the icc rule book would only see them miss the one game but i'm really proud that australia and cricket australia has come down extremely hard on them because I think we have to make an enormous stand for a number of reasons. Obviously, we cannot have that in our game. I think being Australians, we always come down very hard on our own. And I think that's fair. I think definitely this is something that we can't have our national team doing. Slamming with a massive ban is absolutely fair. And what it shows to our growing up kids too, playing the game and things like that, it really does have a ripple effect around the country when your national team and, and national icons are doing that. So yeah, some people think a year is a bit too harsh, but I think that's pretty much what we need to do. And I'm pretty comfortable with where that stands. I think the bigger penalty for them will be the tarnished career that will forever be spoken about as ball tamperers. And I think that's an enormous penalty and one you can't put a game limit on or a dollar sign next to, I think, you know, Steve Smith's best since Bradman. Now part of that sentence will always be the fact that he was at the height of this massive scandal and, you know, Warner's reputation, who was probably not as respected as Smith, but, you know, he's always been a little bit of a bad boy. He's really copped a fair whack from many people. And look, Bancroft, he doesn't have the runs on the board, no pun intended, as the other two do. So if he never makes it as a cricketer, well, unfortunately, his reputation and name will basically forever be remembered in relation to this, which is sad, but that's what happens when you live by this and you do those actions. But I must say, over the last couple of days, I think we all deserve to be angry and frustrated, let down and disappointed by what happened. But as I saw the footage of Steve Smith at the airport and, and photos in the paper and, and reports that he's a shattered man and, and a teary mess and things like that, which he should be, Part of me really felt a lot of sympathy for him. And, and and don't misread that by it meaning I've let him off for a bit of what he's done. As I said, I stand by everything I said in the other video. I think he deserves all the wax that he got over the last few days. Because you just can't be doing that. And it's madness that it got to that situation in terms of where they felt they had to do to win a game. But where I was at was, I guess, the human element. Now. I think everyone wanted to see how we would sanction them and, and what would happen. We've given them a year, and now I think it's time to take the process onto that track of forgiving them. We'll never forget it, but you sometimes got to forgive. And, and I did feel empathy for him. I, I couldn't help but feel, because I really love Steve Smith, and yeah, this is a pretty 
major blow to, to me respecting him, but I do believe it is a man and a couple of men who have made an enormous mistake, but we do in this industry and in life are very good at giving second chances. And while it is fairly raw at the moment and it does hurt, and, and it hurt a lot for a couple of days even as a sports fan, but now I've gotten to the point, I haven't forgiven them, but I'm prepared to really begin that process. And it's hard to not acknowledge the fact that they are just another human being and, and what they are going through, albeit it's self-inflicted, but what they are going through is so difficult. And I think it's time that we just stop belting them around the ears because they've copped their suspension. And I think it's time we put it on the back burner because you just can't keep belting guys, belting guys. Yeah, they've stuffed up. They've now been disciplined. It's now time for us to lay off. They don't have to be our favorite sportsmen. They don't, we don't even have to like them anymore, but I think we've got to let up now that they have been sanctioned because they are just people. And one of the three or whoever has been involved, people will have depression in a couple of months. You know, look what happened to James Hurd. He tried to kill himself. I mean, we're gonna see something like this in a couple of months where their mental state is in disarray and and i think that is sad and i keep referring to back to yes it's self-inflicted we know that they stuffed up but i must say i was driving to work today and and i couldn't help but as i listened to the radio reports and things i couldn't help but genuinely feel for what they were going through because say what you will about warner by all reports, yeah, he's a bit of a hothead, has a temper, but he is a very good guy, a good father, and just another bloke like you and I, another person like you and I. Steve Smith, a massive fan of him, a fantastic individual. Bancroft is regarded as one of the hardest workers and dedicated cricketers in Australia. Clearly they've buggered up and made an enormous mistake that they'll forever be remembered by. But I do like to think that it's somewhat of an aberration and something that in what seems to be 30 minutes of madness or whatever time limit you want to put on it is something that have tarnished their whole careers and, and Chris Scott put a really good analogy which I'm sure you saw on 360 about if you put a frog in cold water he'll immediately jump out but if you put a frog in warm water and slowly heat it up over time he'll eventually boil himself to death and while we have seen this Australian cricket team almost, if you don't follow it closely, almost go from a great cricketing nation to, to this crazy ball tampering cheat. It seems like such a black and white change, but as the analogy suggests, the culture has gradually gotten worse and sort of spiraled out of control into this environment that allowed them to have such clouded vision on what was right and wrong. And, and I'm not trying to make any excuses or forgive them. I want to make that clear, but that's where they've gotten to in their game and their life, that it's crazy the pressure that must have grown and, and the culture must have just spiraled out and the will to win just got so huge that somehow it has led to this. So it was a great analogy and one that really painted a great picture, but I certainly can't stress enough that I think you know, people calling for them to be sacked and never play again is ridiculous. You know, you've got to give people a second chance. And, and we see people get many chances in life. I'd like to think that these three guys are still quality men who have made a massive, massive mistake. You know, maybe they're not going to be your best mate if you met them at the pub, but I don't think they're bad people. And they've made a huge mistake, but I don't think we should continually crucify them. And, you know, Steve Smith, I dare say he'll never captain Australia again. You'd have to say that with confidence. But I think they should all be given an opportunity to play for Australia again. I think we have to eventually forgive them and give them that second chance. You know, look at Gary Lyon. You know, a lot of people at the time, major criticism around what he was doing. And, you know, who knows exactly what was going on even still, aside from those who were close to him. You know, it's all forgotten now, really, or not forgotten, but forgiven. He's on our TVs again, and we listen to what he has to say. You know, even someone like James Hurd is back in the game as well, and maybe even Ben Cousins, whose life has spiraled out of control many a time, and he's been given so many opportunities to save himself, and he doesn't take them. He's even got a job at West Coast last time I've seen. So if there's one thing we do well 
as a society is we do forgive and give people a chance to redeem and I think that's what we've got to get to eventually and people will get to that point in their own heads at different stages but I'm prepared to start that process over the next couple of days I think because you've got to empathise with what they're going through and I think we've now disciplined them it's time to move on to the next stage in, in terms of Australian cricket I mean it's hard to say exactly where the culture got to a lot of reports of how bad it was and and that sort of stuff it's hard to know exactly what gets talked about in terms of sledging you know how bad is it you know no one likes us in the cricketing world I'd like to touch on that and the the aggression and the will to win and maybe we just got carried away on this occasion and, and the will to win just got so huge and the pressure was so huge that it, it got to this. Clearly it should never get to this ever again. But equally, I love our aggression and I think and I hope that when these guys do come back and when we do play our next test series, that we don't lose that aggression that makes us so good. You don't have to love it that we're aggressive and maybe we sledge a bit much than maybe other countries. I love that about us. Obviously, you don't know exactly what's being said out there. And we know you can't bring all those elements into the sledge, you know, personal, race, uh, all those other things, you know, anything like that. We know the boundaries that you can't cross anymore. So no one's in a position to say whether Australia crosses them or not. Clearly, they're pretty fierce on the pitch and they love to bowl some short stuff and get up in your grill and i love that to be honest so i think that's part of our makeup as long as we don't overstep that line too often and as far as i know i mean we haven't overstepped it too many times before clearly not to this extent before but yeah we're no angels but we've never been cheating before or we've never done anything outrageous on the pitch you know a few things get said out there maybe they're not appropriate maybe they are it's a bit like adam gilchrist the way he played you know sometimes he'll be three not out and he'll snick at the slips going after it people complain about him going after the ball and it's like well you don't get the aggressive hundred off a hundred deliveries if you don't risk the odd snick to the slip cordon early because that's the way he plays and that's the way we play so I don't think we can expect to always toe this fine line on aggression and in your face and people call it bullying I don't know if it's bullying I don't really care. I like the way we go about our cricket. I like that we're aggressive. And sometimes we may overstep that mark in terms of what we say out there. But I'm prepared to cop that because as far as I'm concerned, I haven't seen anything majorly offensive. Obviously, I'm not out there or in the uh, circles of the world cricket scene, but I think that's part of what makes us so good. And I really like the fact that other nations are intimidated and have a bit of a cry over it I don't mind that what we did the other day was terrible and outrageous and should never happen again but I hope we don't lose that edge I hope it doesn't go too far the other way and we become not soft but we lose that hard edge that makes us an extremely good cricketing nation so I really do hope that we don't lose that because you know we there's a lot of commentary about you know, the Aussies are just too full on and it's too hard, you know. What about the unsociable hawks back in the day, you know? We're talking different sports, we're talking different blokes, you know. You might mount a case for that's a poor analogy, but I did not like the unsociable hawks. But gee whiz, did I respect them and really fear them on the footy field when the cats lined up against them. And I think I don't have any want to be loved as a cricketing nation. I'm just happy to take the 20 wickets and have more runs in the opposition. And obviously you don't want to be overstepping the mark and abusing players or talking about their families or talking about their race or talking about whatever, sexuality, whatever it is. I don't think anyone who is listening, unless you've been out in the field, is in a position to actually quote word by word what some people have said out there. So I'm not sure we can say how or if or when we have overstepped that line. So I'm quite happy with where our sledging is at. Yeah, we're aggressive, but I think over the journey, it's sort of what has made us an intimidating side. You know, I know the social boundaries have changed a little bit over the last decade, but I was quite comfortable with where that's at. 
I don't know any of the Australian 11 personally, clearly, but maybe there's a couple of blokes in there who take it too far, and maybe you just want to bring them into line a little bit. But I would hate to see us lose that hard edge and aggression that makes us such a great cricketing nation. So that's about all I wanted to cover off on. I just wanted to, well, I say summarise, but I look at the uh, recorder and we're going on about 16 minutes. So there was a fair bit of interest in the video last week or whenever I put that one out. So I thought I'd do a bit of an update, a bit of a follow up. I do stress that I think at some point we've got to move to forgiving these players and at some point we'll welcome them back as cricketers and at some point in the future this will be something we don't always talk about in association with the game and their names. It'll always be there, it'll be a bit of a tarnish on their careers but I think we've got to start to move forward after we've now handed down the ban and obviously secondary I just wanted to talk about that aggression and, and how people, you know, we're a bit soft these days in a lot of areas of society. You know, you, you can't be too mean or aggressive and you, you've got to fit into every little group and everything like that these days. I, I don't mind the aggression. And like I said with the Gilchrist analogy, if occasionally we go over the boundary in terms of that, well, so be it. I'm, I'm prepared to take the good with the bad in that regard. As long as we're not cheating, as long as we're not being racist or anything like that. I think it's fair game. So let me know what you think. Hopefully you've made it all the way through this video or at least listen to most of it. I really appreciate that. I know there's a few cricket fans out there who listen to my channel. So hopefully your super coach side went all right tonight too. I will be uploading this one, I dare say, after the football. So hopefully you guys had a decent night and personally, hopefully Dusty Martin tore it apart as my VC. But I'll be back soon with plenty of super coach talk. I'll chat to you soon. Cheers.